Welcome to a Halloween special of five things. And this is Dave here from Nerdbox, and I am joined by my lovely co-host, Charlie, a.k.a. Chetty. Hi. So, uh, Charlie, you notice anything uh, new about the uh, around here or anything like that? Um, uh, you got some shit glowing behind you. I could see that. Oh, well, yeah, I got that, for? too, but I changed the hat since you complained about it so much. Oh, yeah, look at you. What do you got there? What is it? What is that? It's just gray now with some oh. funky design on it. Oh, you brought so much attention to it. I thought it was special. It's just a great fucking hat. Just to fucking one up me. Good job. <sighs> oh, boy. <laughs> boy. All right, guys. So what we're talking about today is, again, this is our Halloween special. And we want to talk about five horror movies for Halloween that you can introduce your kids and your family to. But before we do that, let's get into a little bit of... Uh, Halloween history. Halloween origins date back over 2,000 years to the ancient Celtic festival of Samhain. Bonfires were built where people gathered in costumes to burn crops and animals as sacrifices. Celtics believe that the night before Samhain blurred the lines between the living and the dead, which helped Celtic priests predict the future. Now, in 43 AD, Romans expanded their territories into Celtic territories, mixing their culture of celebrating the dead with celebrating the goddess of fruit, which led to bobbing for apples. Now, 609 AD, the Pope moved All Saints Day to November 1st and deemed November 2nd as All Souls Day. And the day before All Saints Day, a.k.a. All Hallows' Eve. People began wearing masks and they would leave their homes in the dark so that ghosts would not mistake them for fellow spirits. Bowls of food were left outside of homes as a sacrifice to prevent ghosts from coming in. Then in the 19th century, as European traditions expanded in America, which was going from house to house asking for food or money, merged into American culture. In 1927, was the first time that trick or treat was first used. I am inevitable. With us today is our special guest, Mick from the Scene Snobs. Welcome, Mick. It's Mick Manhattan from the Scene Snobs. Hey, everybody. I'm glad to be here, guys. Thank you for having me. Um, I host a show called the Scene Snobs Podcast. So if you guys want to check out some absurd craziness and geek and pop culture, go check out thescenesnobs.com. That's about all I got. (laughs) All right. Yeah, he's got some interesting topics that you want to check out, definitely. And he also has some merch. We'll have some of those links down in our descriptions below so you can check that stuff out. All right. Well, with that, uh, Mick, you're our, you're our guest. You get the honors. What is your number five? I, I went about this. You know, I have a nine-year-old and a five-year-old, and I have a wife that isn't fully into horror, but she you know, goes along with it for, to, you know, for me. So I was thinking about things to help introduce the kids to horror because I want them to be into it. Uh, and the first one, my number five, uh, I thought would be a good one. It's actually, it's two, but I think that they are so similar at works, and it's a good introduction, especially for Halloween, and that's the Goosebumps movies. Oh. Okay. Uh, I thought family-friendly, like you can sit down, but it has horror elements. I thought, you know, and they weren't, you know, they, they are what they are. They're four kids, but they weren't too bad. Now, the movies or the movies with a mixture of the show? Uh, the show, I've tried. I think the kids are, it's a little dated for the kids because kids today don't really get the 90s, <laughs> you know, <laughs> and they probably shouldn't, you know, like we were very free. <laughs> I just never, I never got around to seeing them. I don't know. Uh, I don't know what the reason is. 
Yeah, and then like as soon as you Google anything pertaining to like family horror, horror comedy, anything like that, they typically fall up or come up in the first ten. So I have to make it a point to to watch those with the kid for sure. Yeah, and and, and again, it's not it's not too scary, so I think it it helps with that introduction into it for sure. First one kind of stands out a little bit more to me than the second one does. I think my kids like the second one more because the kid, the main kid, is younger in it. Uh-huh. And they could they could identify with it more, yeah. And uh, it's kind of that one. Whereas the you, the first one is you know playing up the lore of Goosebumps and introducing you to a lot of it. The second one, you, if you've seen it, the first one, you're coming in the second one. It's like we're just going to balls to the wall, throw everything at you. Uh-huh. And I kind of liked that a little bit more because it just opened it up more. All right. So my number five, uh, I'm going to say this. Uh, my numbers are typically in no particular order. So, the first one that I'm going to throw out there is Beetlejuice. In all fairness, in 1988, 89, they came out the same year, no, not the same year, the year before Batman, so 88. Some of that shit would freak you the hell out if you were young enough. Like, the voodoo head thing, I'll, oh, tell, yeah. you what freak, I'll tell you what it was fucked to me, I would tell you right now, is when the Dietzes go and see their rep and then they have to they change their faces and shit and then like the eyeballs on the fingers and all that when i was like seven years old that scared the shit out of me (laughs) that gave me nightmares and uh the little one has seen it we made it a point to have her watch it around last halloween or whatever and i am a giant pussy guys because (laughs) she (laughs) couldn't she couldn't care less (laughs) so but I think that's usually a good starting point is Beetlejuice. Yeah. The scene that got me in Beetlejuice is uh, the attorney when she smokes and it comes out her neck. And it, oh, oh yeah. 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 Oh, that's Dude, dope. The effects, the effects in that movie for the time, the practical effects were so good. So I, I guess I'm bringing the dark and heavy with my number five, but it may make sense because uh, my introduction into horror was The Thing and American Werewolf in London. One of those two was first. I don't know which one, but th- that was my introduction. But I'm not that heavy with my kids. And my number five is Coraline. You can't go wrong with that Burton-esque animation. You know, um, I, I, you know I, I, I kicked around a few with that. Uh, I, I kind of kept them, I, I pretty much kept them off at mine personally because they are that's clearly made for kids. And I know Goosebumps is too, but there's something about the live action that kind of, there, there's, it kind of crosses a line, I think, mm-hmm. and where you're more into the horror genre. The creepiness, even as an adult, that creepiness kind of gets me the button eyes, the other <laughs> mother. Yeah, oh, definitely. You need those animations that are, that are horror. They're horror movies. You can't not call them that, um, but just based for kids. The house with the clock in its walls. This was a surprise for me when I first watched it. It, It's now become a staple in our house. We love it. It's not hardcore, like horror for kids, but um, it's definitely on that brink, in my opinion. And uh, Kate Blanchett and and Jack Black do a great role. Even the kid in, I can't remember his name, but. They played a fantastic part in in these movie in this movie, and it, it just did. It, it's almost kind of reminded me of uh, what was it, Thirteen Ghosts, the remake. Oh, uh, okay, yeah, yeah. But for kids, uh-huh. you know, like you, you kind of mix that Goonies with that, and and that's kind of where you're going with it. Uh, and I really enjoyed it. I thought it was just a really well done movie. Charlie, number four. The Witches with Angelica Houston. The original 1990? Is that the movie came out? Yeah, 1990. 89, 90 something. Yep. That movie scared the shit out of me. <laughs> it scared the shit out of me. That whole scene. And it wasn't like anyone I ever talked to about it. It's always, <clears throat> oh, I can turn into a mouse. Like, I've never been the type of person that freaks out over the idea of that. Because I'm like, that's ridiculous. You can't turn into a mouse. <laughs> but but that scene both scenes one when they do the reveal of what she actually looks like as a witch Oof. 
And it's another prosthetic makeup one. You got it. That's, there might be a theme here. Um, and the the scene at the end of the movie when they all turn they, they turn the tables and turn the witches into mice and rats and all that. Mm-hmm. And it is, it's just I just think it's grotesque. But um, I don't know if I'd let Abby watch that one. Just it, I might be a little too scarred. <laughs> <laughs> another one i agree with you because i watched the remake too and i was like it's here's another one that kind of in a weird way remake that beautified the disgusting nature of what they did in those movies like she was disgusting and angelica houston when she yeah. changed into her witch form was horrifying and then but even like the cgi mouth that they did on Anne Hathaway and like you know she's bald but she's still like beautiful you know and it's like yeah and it's yeah. like you know Angelica Houston was beautiful for the time they were doing that you know older now I'm not saying she's ugly or anything my number four is staying in the practical effects world it's an 80s film I saw it in the theater as a kid and the film reel burned in the middle of the movie which maybe scared me a little bit more it's the gate Yes. Never saw it. Oh, I don't. I, I think you would still like it. It still holds up for today. Yeah. No, I'd yeah. give it a shot. You you haven't stirred me wrong yet with any other movies you recommended. So I take your word. To give you a little background on it, this tree gets dug up in these kids' backyard and it morphs like this rock with crystals in it. And as they're digging up the rock, this one kid bleeds into it and then it turns into we have demons that are trying to come out and get them. It was really good. Kid driven, yeah. kids are Stephen Dorf. Yeah, a young Stephen Dorf is in it. No kidding. Yes. Okay. There is one scene in the movie. You know, if you're introducing this to your kids, that's probably going to bug your kids, and it's the dog scene. Ooh, that's all I'll yeah. say on that. Yeah. I can only imagine. Yeah. But it works. And yeah. part of the horror, it works. If you notice, there's sort of a trend, like it's starting out light and it's getting a little darker and I'm building up to something. So that way they're kind of into the horror. And the next one for me is the Monster Squad. Yes! 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 Uh, I think... got nerds! <laughs> yeah, and I got my five. We watched it. My five-year-old runs around. And he's like, you know, Wolfman's got nards, right? And right. They, <laughs> you know, so they get into it. It's that I think... As much as we all love Goonies, and I wouldn't put Goonies into it has horrific moments for the 80s. Everybody did, but um, it has, like, Goonies is not a horror movie. Goonies is an adventure movie. I would put that on the same plane as, like, uh, Raiders of the Lost Ark. You know, if if I'm telling kids to go watch adventures or action movies, that's part of that. Monster Squad takes Goonies and says, we're going to introduce you to horror. Mm -hmm. Uh, and I, I think that's a good marriage of it because you get those kids, you can identify with them and what they're doing. Even kids today who may not be latchkey kids, may not be the ones that go out on adventures every day uh, uh, past their computer screens, but they watch this and they're like, I want to do that. You know, I want to get out there and do things. Uh, and then you have Dracula and the rest of the awesome universal monsters. <laughs> yeah. And, that's, and that's the Gilman, which I think is underutilized in movies. I would agree. They uh, they did a great job in that one. Not that it was a remake of anything, but like as far as paying respect to the Universal Monsters, I always thought like they barely changed the Frankenstein's monster. They barely changed Creature in the Black Lagoon. They updated the where of the Wolfman perfectly. They updated Dracula perfectly. The whole scene with the mummy and the freaking wrapping coming undone is the shit it's one of the best scenes of the whole movie you'll notice too as we go on that's the precipice right there because now it opens it goes farther into horror yeah like i I just graduated from now from like kids movies with horror elements to the perfect balance in my opinion to now horror and this is how I would almost introduce these movies to my kids. Yeah, no, they, you nailed. I can't believe I didn't put. And I thought about putting that one on here, and I just skipped it. Son of a bitch. <laughs> my number three. I'm gonna go with Mick on this one. It's kind of this is the this is the precipice. This is the get get on the boat. Literally get on the boat or get off. If you can't handle it, we're gonna. I don't know. We're gonna beat you, put you in the dog crate. No, I would never do that to my kid. Um, Jaws. 
Yes. Oh, a good yeah. choice. I, I fumbled around with that one. That's my honorable mentions. That's a horror movie. I don't think it always gets put in the horror movie category, but it's totally a monster movie. Oh, yeah. And uh, I learned watching, I, you know, I watched Jaws uh, as a kid, WPIX, New York, Channel 11. They used to have uh, uh, Sunday morning, they did like Sunday morning movies, Sunday afternoon movies, stuff like that. And there was yeah. at least a couple times a year, they always did the trilogy. Yeah. And you skip the last two, but you know, you always watch the first one and, and you know, it's it's almost like a coming of age, you know, and and it teaches them good movie making all oh, at the yes. same time. All at the same time. So oh absolutely. <laughs> yeah, my kid loves them. He, he he loves all the Jaws movies. First one especially because he's like, it's just you're not even safe on this boat. Like it's just it's something so out there. Yeah. But th- I think that's a great introduction for horror movies. That's something that we typically watch three or four times a year in the house. Mm-hmm. It comes on, everything stops. Everybody sits down to watch that movie. And yeah. there's always that one scene, you know, where it just the zoom up. That always gets me. I have to oh everybody shut up. I gotta watch this. Now, my honest opinion, it's the it's the cinematographers and the score. That is the scariest part of Jaws. The shark's great. Don't be, like, yeah, I guess if we got to name the movie something, let's call it the Jaws. But <laughs> the music, that freaking violins and the dun dun, the, the two notes, two fucking notes, bro. And they, and that is it. And it scares the shit out of you. And it makes you feel like it could happen. I can only imagine what it was like. I talked to my parents about it. I talked to like the in laws about it. I'm like, what was it like seeing Jaws in the theater? And they're like, uh-uh. <laughs> they get <laughs> wide-eyed about it. It's like it still freaks them out. Yeah. yeah. That's a good movie. That's a solid. That's an excellent movie, yeah. So, all right, Mr. Dave, number three. Well, I'm uh, staying in the Universal Monster realm, but I'm going back. I'm going way back, and I'm actually doing Abbott and Costello meets Frankenstein. Nice. Smart. I think it's a nice mix of comedy, introducing the characters in the right way where you don't really need to see any of those origins. My, you know, my five year old and I sat and watched last week. Sven Gulli showed um, Adam Costello meet uh, Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. Now, my nine year old loves Meets Frankenstein. Um, mm-hmm. But this was my five year old's like quick introduction. I was like, sit down and watch, watch this. It's funny, but it's also scary at the same time. Yeah. And he was into it. I was not expecting him to stick around. And he was yeah. into it the whole time. That's a great way to get them to start liking black and white movies, too. Mm-hmm. Get them in there early so this way they appreciate it and then they can watch some other one. Yeah. I think this one is now bringing you to, to horror, but still not quite full on there yet. And that's Ghostbusters. Like I said, going from Monster Squad, like, that's almost on the level of Ghostbusters, but Ghostbuster mm-hmm. brings it. Now you, you've taken them from Monster Squad, and you're like, oh man. Then you take them to Ghostbusters, and you're like, wow, this is what money behind a project looks like. like you know, it's that mm-hmm. much better, and it's still horror. That is a horror movie, horror comedy. Totally. Yeah. Um, and deser- and it, I think it, it doesn't get that. It, it doesn't get mentioned with horror enough. You know, maybe more so now, but not back then. They tried to kind of hide it from me because it was such a hit. Yeah. But uh, it's 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 a good introduction in horror, in my opinion. I think the cast overshadows it a little bit. I think that's what it's... Not that it suffers from that, but mm-hmm. I think that's why it gets pulled away from the horror genre like it does. But yeah, you're right. Like, the, the special effects, the score, the premise of the whole thing, it just uh-huh. happens to have, you know, these guys that are basically the, the height of their comedy careers my number two as we're we're climbing we're climbing here uh child's play child's play i know yeah see now now wait 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 wait. oh my god man hold on hold on you jumped you just pushed a kid off the ledge you watch horror all the time shut your face my my daughter still haven't watched child's play yet listen Listen, I watched Child's Play. Again, this is another one of those like WPIX, Friday Night at the Movies, NBC, whatever it was. And it was on. Now, granted, that was the 
the and actually that might have been HBO, might have been HBO Cinemax. Doesn't matter. Yeah, it had to be because there was definitely cursing in it. But I watched that movie, and it's it does scare the shit out of you, and it does it's for good reason. It's a fucking doll that comes alive and tries to stab people. No, but it's you know it's got its moments, and you know I think. You know, I'm I'm the person that thinks that bullying, this is going to make sense. Bullying is an underappreciated art form and kids are soft nowadays as a result. Having said that, I think kids need to get the shit scared out of them a little bit. And I think they need to go to bed with the light, with a little bit of light coming from mom and dad's room that just hits the toy just right. And they're not sure if it's alive or not. And they're just kind of like laying there frozen in fear. My number two, I'm staying with the monsters, and we've talked about it already, but it's elevating from the Abbott and Costello meets Frankenstein, and it's Monster Squad. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, so we don't have to spend too much time on that. We can just roll on. Beetlejuice, Little Shop of Horrors, Godzilla versus King Ghidorah, um, the Twilight Zone movie, yeah. Paranorman. Monster House, yes, and that's... weirdly throwing it out there, uh, I would say like Arachnophobia. It's it's a creepy movie, but it's not as bad as you might think. That one scared the shit out of me when I was a kid. That freaked me out. That freaked me out like Jaws should have freaked me out. I think. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's fair. That was our Jaws. <laughs> Yeah, a little bit, right? Like, they yeah. fucking spiders are everywhere. I only got three. I only got three, and I'm a little ashamed of them in a way. Hocus Pocus, because I think I might have misunderstood the, the genre a little bit, or the topic. But <laughs> I mean, to but eat it, kids. I 100% agree but, with you. That's but that's a kid's movie. one. Yeah, it, it, right. It works them into the genre, the witches and all this other kind of stuff. Jessica, uh, Sarah Jessica Parker's boobies. Because um, <laughs> they were... The fucking heavies were out in that movie. I don't care what anyone says. Uh, even it just look a horse. Uh, Ghostbusters <laughs> is my second one, and then Nightmare Before Christmas. So, and that's that's that. Dave, your honorables. Uh, so I got Monster House is definitely in there, and I went a little bit more kid friendly with this one. The what? The Little Vampire. I thought that was a good okay. one. To kids okay. too. It's a fun one. And then my my last one, another black and white one, creature feature, them with the giant ants. Nice, another good one there too. And then we've mentioned a couple of the other ones already: the Jaws and Ghostbusters. All right, we're down to the last one. We're down to the wire, Mister Mick. What's All right, one? so like, like I said, I mean, I you went child's play in the last one. I saved my true introduction into horror for this one. Like again, if you go back over my list, it's kind of like climbing a ladder you know, to get to full-on horror. And because there's no nudity in it and there's an iconic uh, monster uh, in it, um, Friday 13th, part six. Oh. You know, you get the deaths, but they're almost kind of comical, like the head going through the RV, you know, they chopping off the three heads with the machete, the bending backwards. Like, those are things you can, I think you can explain to your kids. And they won't be too hardcore. Uh, yeah. Again, there's no nudity. There's sexual, you know, sexual play in there and stuff, but not enough. It's not too overt like the other movies uh, and a lot of other movies that were coming out, especially around that time. Um, and it's not as dark as all those movies. And you clearly get a winner in the end in the good. Uh, my number one. So here's here's I think you guys are getting the feel. I, I stand by my number one. I stand by number two. I don't care what Dave says. It, it starts like Beetlejuice is very much kids and then the jump scare, witch, and then the jaws and then child's play. Number one, by this point, they are kind of tweens, teenagers ish. And this is where the psychological game that I'm playing with the head really kicks in. And if it hits them like it did me, at least the first time, scream. They're about oh, that age, you know, they're hanging out with their friends or at school. They got, you know, all the atypical characters are all there. But like, maybe it's hard to remember, but Scream, when it first came out, like, I mean, it's obviously got a following. There's no doubt about that. Like, they're, mm. you know, they're doing, they've done a bunch of them doing more. But uh, yeah, I don't know. I think that's a solid one to watch with your like maybe 15 year old, 16 year old, for if they're willing to watch a movie with you at that age, I guess. But, you know. <laughs> 
if they don't hate you at that point. Um, but that was the whole the, the arc, you know what I mean? Like that's yeah. Scream. Scream, I personally I would save for high school because I feel yeah, like that's you. a good you're in high school movie and that's like, the idea, exactly. Right. Like, and and uh, that's why I would say like a lot of the Friday the 13th and even the Nightmare on Elm Street because they were teenagers. Right. You know, and, and like I want I want my kids to identify with them. And I, a lot of that, my thinking when I come into like picking movies for them is when will they enjoy it the most? At what age is this something they'll enjoy? Yeah, I, I, I tried to hold off screen till the kids got earlier, but my wife overruled me on that because that's in her top three of the slasher movies. So everybody in my house has seen it at a, a fairly young age, around nine. Bro, I can legitimately say that, like, when I watched that for the first time, like, the jaw drop effect happened when he gets the microphone and there's and there, there's two of them. And I'm like, of course there's two of them. Like, you know what I mean? It's, just, it's a well done movie, obviously. Well, I, I didn't jump into slashers, so I'm still hovering around in that kid realm. And so we introduced the monsters. If they're doing good with stuff like Coraline, I'm going to Poltergeist. Good Yo, you know, and we want a creepy doll there, Charlie. We got the clown in that movie that scares shit. kids. You're giving me shit. They're fucking coming out of the TV. <laughs> what the shit? <laughs> yeah, but it's a TV. Kids won't recognize. Sorry. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What's that thing? It's just like this thing. It's just on. It's on the fucking TV. <laughs> That's a good choice, I think. That is a, good a family, you know. It's all, it's almost I put it on par with like kind of like Jaws. Yeah. I feel like it has yeah. that Spielberg, you know, he was a producer. So like I, I, he has that Spielberg vibe to it. Mm -hmm. A lot of practical effects still hold mm -hmm. up in that movie as well. Yeah. Yeah. I, uh, pretty much all these, right? Did all of our, other than the animated ones, I guess. I think that's, we all kind of had a common theme with that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. We're, and basically, we're, what's we're that? We're definitely right? in our late 30s. Well, that's fair, but um, but I don't know. I just I think that that's uh, you know, there's something to be said for that. That the, the you know the uh, anything that wasn't animated was older, you know, at least by standards. I don't know. New movies suck. I just uh, <laughs> that's it. <laughs> All right, folks, you have seen our five things. My list is the best. I'm just gonna say it. It's no one's fault. Dave, Mick, Mick, I really appreciate having you as a guest, man. You 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 gave it the old college try, Dave. <laughs> I'm glad you got a new hat. Anyway, I <laughs> want to thank everybody for watching. Make sure you like, subscribe, comment below. Let us know any list that you might want us to do. What are your lists? What is your top five horror family movies for you? Uh, I'm sure the list isn't going to be as good as mine still, because that's just the way it is. That's the way the cookie crumbles. It's not my fault. I didn't make the rules. Anyway, four or five things. I am Charlie. What, what are you doing? I'm in the middle of my wrap-up, bro. Yeah, yeah, whatever. My kid's going to watch that. You're going to be surprised. For five things, <laughs> I am Charlie. This is Dave. And our guest, Mick. Mick, give yourself a plug. Hey, uh, thanks, everybody. I, guys, appreciate you having me on. This is a lot of fun. I had a great conversation with you. Um, everybody, go check out the Scene Snobs podcast. Uh, head over to thescenesnobs.com. we got all our links over there. And actually, right now, we're running a Halloween promotion. There are Easter oh, eggs wow. on the website. If you find all the Easter eggs and message us, you win a prize. Nice. 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 All right. That's it. Until season two. See you guys later. Bye. Hey.